We've already covered the biggest and best of the year, haven't we, Mason? And all that's left is the biggest and worst. That's right. Uh, leave a like on this video if you could, because we're just going to put the boot into some stuff that didn't do very well. Uh, that's right. It's not, I was going to say, it's not super fun to do. It's a little bit fun. It's so much Depending fun. Depending on what it is. There's some well, stuff true. here that I'm like, you deserve this. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to really put the boot into some people's fan films that they spent their entire life savings on making. Here Absolutely we go. Absolutely not. But what I want to do, I want to talk about the five movies that probably lost the most money. Of course, there's also movies that were pushed back, didn't get proper releases, that you know aren't included in here. It's been a weird year. I don't need to explain this to you. You've lived it. What do you mean weird? Bad? Oh, yeah, no, it's been, it's been bad. Yeah, 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 for sure. So here we go. Starting off with Underwater, which opened January 10. It cost $80 million, but it only made $40 million. That's a lot less money. I, I've seen it, and it's all right. It's like aliens, but underwater. Yeah, but I mean, maybe part of the problem, in addition to pandemics, was the fact that it's called Underwater. And I think mm. a lot of people probably would have seen that and gone, I can experience that myself. Run the sink for a bit. <laughs> Dunk your head in it. Dunk your head. But you've missed a key piece of information from this. This was pre-pandemic, oh, January yeah. 10, so it's still tanked off the back of huh. coming out in a time when people were going to the movies. That's rough. Next up, we had Doolittle. Remember Doolittle? Yep. Do you remember that it cost $175 million to make, not including marketing? I did not remember that, but that's an interesting fact to have and probably contributes to the fact that it's a big loser. <laughs> that's right. And then it made $217 million. So it barely made more than what it cost and that's not even factoring in marketing. Yeah, yeah. You'd think that people would go to a, the movie theatre to see Robert Downey Jr., one of the biggest stars in the world. The biggest dog. Remove a set of bagpipes from the anus of a dragon. Yes. And yet they didn't. Yeah. Wow. What do you think that is? Because that's weird and gross. <laughs> and a reshoot. Do you know it was a reshoot? Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's probably the main reason. They added it. I'm not going to the cinema for anything that's been reshot, all right? <laughs> Uh, these next two I haven't even heard of, but uh, apparently they're, they're not super well received and people didn't like them. One is called The Turning, which is a supernatural thriller starring Mackenzie Davis. It cost $14 million and it made $18 million. Often they'll, uh, you know, they'll make a low-budget horror movie in the hope that, you know, it costs 15 and you'll make 50 Sure. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Not in this case. And we had the rhythm section with Blake Lively, which cost $50 million and made $5.9 million. And you might be like, what's that? Well, I got the synopsis because I don't know either. I'm ready. I'm ready Steph to listen. Stephanie goes into a downward spiral when she loses her family in a plane crash. Later on learning the incident was orchestrated by terrorists, she decides to take revenge. So there you go. Not good though, apparently. But maybe it's amazing. I haven't seen it. I don't, I don't want to put the boot in. I think word would get around if it was amazing. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> hey, we've all got nothing to do and we're all stuck in our homes. You want to watch this? Is it good? No. <laughs> And at number five, we had Call of the Wild. Uh, that's the one where Harrison Ford talks to a CGI dog. It cost $135 million and it made $79 million. It probably shifted some units on digital and Disney Plus or whatever. Sure, yeah, but yeah. That didn't get many people into cinemas, it would say. You'd think people would want to buy the Blu ray just for the, you know, the behind the scenes of. Just a man in a ping pong ball suit catching a stick or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Retrieving said stick for Harrison Ford. That's and right. And they CGI the dog over the top. Exactly. I love seeing the interviews of that where like, was it hard to like do acting like with a man instead of a dog? And he's like, oh, they pay me a lot of money. I don't give a shit. Sure. I'll do it. Whatever. Did you get emotional when you put the uh, uh, wardrobe on? No, I got paid. Yeah. yeah. Now I want to talk about some losers that we don't exactly have hard numbers on necessarily. And also that came out during the pandemic. But even despite all that, it's like... You still, you made some missteps here. Oh, I see, yeah. You know what I mean? So this <laughs> We can't completely blame you, but we're going <laughs> to partially to majorly blame you. Exactly. So the New Mutants, with a budget of 67 to potentially $80 million, it was handed over from uh, Fox to Disney in the merger. They clearly didn't know what to do with it. And eventually they just put it out in the middle of the pandemic and just went, whatever, sure. it's out there. Yeah. It only made $46 million in box office which is less than it cost mm -hmm. to make. I mean, I don't think it probably had much of a marketing budget regardless. And it just kept getting pushed back and back over the years. And then the last thing out of you know, the Fox X-Men movies was just... Kind of a dud. Yeah. <laughs> Not the worst thing Fox has ever done, but mm. probably the one with the least characters in it. <laughs> it's like six sure. people in that movie. But the most demon bears. Probably. Yeah. One demon bear. I haven't seen the rhythm section with Blake Live. Might have... 
one to two demon bears. <laughs> That's yeah, right, right, so right. we don't really yeah, So know. it might be either tied yeah. or, or, or beat New Mutants. To be fair, also with the New Mutants, it didn't get the reshoots it was supposed to. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, they could maybe tightened up, changing things, but there you go. Next up, I want to talk about Tenet. Not because it was a total bomb, though it was a total bomb. And it's probably going to do better on streaming and digital, you know what I mean? It's probably going to make a lot of its money back. If they but should put on the DVD box... With subtitles, <laughs> sell a billion copies, I tell you what. Exactly. But the idea behind this movie was that, like, this is going to save cinema. Mm. This is going to bring people back to the theatres. Everyone's going to flock. It's going to make a billion dollars. And it was just a massive miscalculation on behalf of Warner Brothers, which led them to a series of other miscalculations in terms with HBO well, it really Max. did, yeah. yeah. If anything, it might doom cinema forever. Yeah, so... So thanks, Christopher Nolan, lover of cinema. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He's come out and said... He's not the one that was pushing it for a cinema release now. You know what I mean? So, like, maybe he would have held off a little bit longer or... We don't really know. I'm sure they did what they thought was best, which was the Well, thanks for not sticking hard into your guns, Christopher (laughs) Nolan, lover of cinema. Got some numbers here, though. So, it was made for $205 Okay. It made $359 at the box office, Uh which is decent. Sure. That's one of the highest grossing movies of the year. But it was rumoured that it needed $500 million to break even. Oh, boy. So that's less. But again, streaming and that, it's probably going to be fine. Just put the subtitles on. Next up, we have Milan. This was supposed to go to cinemas. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm. if this had about a full release, it could have been one of those billion-dollar movies. Maybe. I think word would have gotten around yeah, that it yeah, was probably fine. Right. Yeah, but then no. again, there's a lot of movies that make a billion dollars that are fine, aren't they? They really are. And, <laughs> and you know... It's prob- went for that international market. Yep. Uh, parents got to take their kids to something during school holidays. Exactly. You're right. Maybe it would have cracked a billion. But Disney, they did a bit of a bloody a handbrake turn because they said, what we're going to do actually, get ready for this, everybody. We're releasing it to streaming. And people went, cool. And then they went, and it's $30. And people went... You're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, People so were very upset about so this. So, to the best of my knowledge, mm-hmm. uh, this movie instead made sixty dollars because mm. you and I both bought it. We to did, review yeah. it on our podcast, The Weekly Planet, yeah. and I don't think anybody else did. So <laughs> a lot of people would just heard that it was going to be released for free eventually yeah. and just waited. And that was a mistake also because they went, well, it's out in September or whatever month it's out, or mm. just wait till December. Yeah. Like they told people that they could wait. And also, on top of that, look, it wasn't very well received. There was controversy regarding thanking a province that it was filmed in, which also was known for having... Muslim internment camps. Mm. So there's a lot of other things going on with this that it just didn't really stick the landing at all. And not only that, it seems like Disney are steering clear of this pay an extra kind of premium for a movie. Yeah. yeah. They made the experiment. They, they sacrificed one of their movies on an experiment. Didn't really work out. No. I mean, I understand why they did it. And maybe if they'd have done it with like a Black Widow or an sure. Eternals, mm-hmm. maybe it would have gone gangbusters. You yeah. Know? But, but maybe it would have also failed and yeah. then they burned another A-list movie. Exactly, you know? and then you open yourself up to piracy and all these other things, mm-hmm. which no doubt play a part. Next up, I want to talk about a movie that um that didn't come out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but having a movie sitting on the shelf wastes money. You know what I mean? I guess it's true, yeah. It's burning a hole in your pocket. You're not getting your return. Sure. Uh-huh, you know what sure. I mean? Mm-hmm. And No Time to Die fully ramped up to a release. The campaigns were running hot. They're doing podcasts. Daniel Craig is going on Saturday Night Live because it's coming out that week. That's right. And at the very last minute, it was pulled. Mm. Then it was pushed back again. It's got a release date, but who knows at this point. It could go to streaming. That's all very much up in the air at this point. But the thing is, they blew probably tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars on a marketing budget, which they now may have to do again. Everyone has forgotten it existed at (laughs) this point. I did until just then. But maybe they'll make it all back on the 2021 16-month No Time to Die calendar that I saw in a shop the other day. <laughs> did you really? I really did. Incredible. Mm-hmm. And you went, did that come out? Yeah. Was that the one with... i going to relive all my favourite moments. <laughs> Ooh. So we'll see how that one goes. Like, it could very well make its money back or it goes to streaming for an insane amount of money. I know they were asking for, like, 600 or $800 million for, like, your Netflixes or whatever, but we'll see. But the biggest loser of the year, and it's not us, thank God. Not oh. this year. We normally take it away, <laughs> yeah, don't we? Right? Yeah, right. What are we contributing? Fuck all. But uh, Quibi. Just a, a bit of a recap of Quibi. It's a, a, well, what is it, Mason? Well, it was a, uh, it was a revolutionary streaming <laughs> service, James, that enabled entertainment enthusiasts on the go yep. to watch movies and TV series, wait for it, broken up into 10-minute chunks that you could watch exclusively on your phone, in either portrait or landscape mode. 
it was filmed for both. Uh, we we did do <laughs> some of them were some of them were we we did do an episode of Caravan of Garbage with the boys from Auntie Donna where we talked about one of the 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 biggest shows from them, The Golden Arm. Mm-hmm. If you want a bit of a recap of Quibi? <laughs> But the money that they put into that, it was $1.75 billion that investors contributed, right? Mm. It debuted with a 90-day free trial offer, and then it lost 90% of its users after that period in time. They got huge celebrities to make stuff. You've got a Liam Hemsworth. You've got a Chrissy Teigen. Other shows and people also were on it. Quibi is definitely a noun. Reese Witherspoon. Sassy wildlife. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Sounds incredible, I think. What they failed to comprehend was that you're not providing anybody something that they can't get other places that is better. Like YouTube. Like YouTube or TikTok or Twitter or Instagram or look out a window. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening outside the bus? Life is happening outside the bus. I tell you that much. That's right. Exactly. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's baffling to me. So what they wanted, they wanted 7 million users by year end. Mm-hmm. And they ended up closing the service down with 500,000 people. And now, zero users. Zero users. So it's so closed. Quitter talk, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, it is. But also, the people involved in making those shows own the rights, so they can then shop them around to other streaming services. Maybe you, the viewer, can buy one for yourself. Maybe you want to buy the golden arm and yeah. know what's up. Maybe the Anna Kendrick had a show on it. I don't know. <laughs> Don't think she did. Yeah, but, but she might right. have though, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's too late to check. Just every step of the way, every announcement to me, and look, I'm not an industry insider, and I know you felt the same, was just like, that's the wrong thing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Like yeah. that's but then you know, big swing and a miss. Good on him, I guess. <laughs> but could you argue that losing one point seven five billion dollars is the uh you can't really argue that that's not the biggest loser of the year, right? That is In terms of entertainment. I mean, I'm very entertained by the idea that some really rich people put a bit, over a billion dollars into something that was obviously the worst. So, yeah, I guess you can put a price on it. <laughs> there you go. So, as we said, we've, we do have a winner's video of, mm-hmm. uh, of 2020, which you can watch. But, of course, we do have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. This upcoming episode on Monday, we talk all the, our favourite and least favourite stuff from 2020. That's right. Mostly entertainment stuff, but probably just other stuff we just felt like talking about. Yeah. Just have an event. You know what I mean? That's right. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the listeners are the real winners this year. I agree. Yeah. And the other thing is, we do have a service called BigSandwich.co. Though we are taking a bit of a break over January, the content won't stop there, will it, Mason? Never stops. We've got BigSandwich.co. Exactly. We've got bonus podcasts there. We do a clickbait one. We also do one where we recap a year in pop culture. We That's go, right. Oh my We're going to determine which is the definitively the best year of pop culture. Exactly. Since the beginning of time. We've got movie commentaries coming out the wazoo. That's so right. many. We review comic books. Sometimes right. they're the best and you get a good recommendation. Sometimes they're the worst and you should probably read it out of spite. So if you are looking for content now that Quibi's gone, you're one of those 500k, you just, you're lost in the wilderness. <laughs> what do right. you do? Where do you go? Maybe you can go here. Go to BigSandwich.co. Let us pay back our investors the $1.75 billion dollars that we borrowed we need your help for that we really we? do all right but thanks for watching this video we really appreciate it uh grab that gem you guys we will see you real soon goodbye